Welcome to the Eat Well, Sleep Great, Run Far podcast. My name is Will Franz, and I'm here to help you go farther, faster, and longer without injuries, gut problems, or giving up your favorite foods. This episode was originally recorded as a weekly live in the Trail and Ultra Running Nutrition group on Facebook. If you'd like to join these lives, watch past replays, or get any of the written summaries I do for these weekly, please head to the link in the show notes, drop me a comment. I'm happy to help you out. Now, let's get on with the episode. We are live. So, today, I'm going to be honest, this one might be a little shorter than some of them have been. Um, sorry, silence my phone. It's been a long couple of weeks for me. I... Alex and I split up a little bit ago, and some of you know this, some of you don't. So I'm in the process of moving. There's no animosity. It is as good as it can be, but I'm tired. Um, so next week, you'll see me in a different space. The room will be different. I got a new job as a personal trainer at a different gym. Some of you know who are on my email list. Yesterday was my dad's birthday, which has been shitty since he died in 2016, right? And I'm tired, but... It's Tuesday, and Tuesday is live day. So I wanted to like do the thing I do every Tuesday, stick to some routine, and sorry I'm a few minutes late, but we are getting rolling. So thinking about my dad got me thinking about why I got into this like whole health and fitness space in the first place. And it's because when I was watching him get sick, and fall apart. He died from complications of hep C, which if you don't know, looks a lot like Alzheimer's because when you have hepatic encephalitis, your brain doesn't work really well and you get to watch really strong people fall apart, right? So watching him do that made me want to learn how I could take better care of myself so I didn't have to have other people watch me go through that. And it wasn't his fault. He got pricked by a contaminated needle in a poor sharps control in a hospital, right? Like, shit happens. But still, like, I didn't want that to happen. And I know I had some heart disease in my family, so I got, like, down a rabbit hole of health and fitness and nutrition and all these things. And that's not really why I do it anymore, right? Like, I, I pursued that for a long time. And that is still a backing reason of all my nutritional knowledge and why I do a lot of the, like, foundational health work I do. But the, the community I've created here, or tried to create, um, and a lot of the athletes I work with are definitely not in really poor health, right? Like they're not, they don't have, they often don't have diabetes or cardiovascular disease or all this stuff. And I was listening to someone at this conference over the weekend about your why can change. And this is true for both athletes and us as coaches. Right? Like I originally started working with people for health and fitness um, to live longer and better. And now I want to work with athletes to help them, you know, crush fun shit because <laughs> it's, it's different. And I think that's a relevant thing for athletes where your why is allowed to change. You can get into this space because you want to lose some, lose some fat or something. That's why I started endurance work. That's why it comes to my brain. Right? Like I started cycling really far because I was fat and I wanted to stop being fat. Whereas I like, I fell in love with it. And now like we're in that space and a lot of people go there, right? Like we, we had this purpose when we originally start an activity and then it changes over time. We find a love for it. We find something new, we find some growth and that's where we end up. And for me, I found this space with ultra athletes and I was thinking about why I got it. Cause I wasn't a runner. Like I'm still, I'm still barely a runner compared to probably everybody listening to this podcast or, and watching this video. And I, I realized it's because I really like working with people who want to do hard shit. And there's a lot of that in the ultra community. I really like people who like to push themselves and find their limit, like find that ex like extra edge. And I also have been injured a lot <laughs> in my life. And I 
have found that the ultra community has a disproportionate amount of injuries. If you are an ultra athlete, you've probably been, probably been injured. Hell, if you're a runner, you've probably been injured. Um, we're looking at like 70-ish percent on the upper end of runners per year get injured, right? which is unacceptable. And I've been injured a lot in my life. And I found like, I think this is probably why I connect so well here. Like I haven't really broken a bone unless you count a small digit in one of my toes from something really stupid. I was coming down the stairs too fast and I hit a banister and um, snapped one of the like small, like tiny little piece bones in my toe. Quick side note, when your dad's a PT, who's also a savage, who used to wrestle and uh, went to college only because he was a fantastic wrestler, you tell him you think you broke a bone in your toe. He says, yeah, probably. We're not going to x-ray you, though. If you really want to know, we can separate it apart and wiggle it and see if it wiggles in the wrong spot. If not, I'm just going to tape it together. And you probably just tape it together. That's what I did. But I've had a good amount of soft tissue injuries in my life. I've destroyed my left ankle. I have bursitis in my rest, uh, right knee. I have a very clicky hip, partially because of all the other things. Um, I have a separated shoulder. My left one sits about an inch lower than the other one. And that's not to even mention the weird stuff when I was a kid that I don't actually fully remember. <clears throat> Pardon me. Sometime in middle school, I messed up my hip so bad that my one leg was about an inch longer than the other when measured. And I remember a few of these. I don't remember others. I've had a lot of injuries in my life and most of them were soft tissue. And this is one of the reasons I was really attracted to ultra runners. They're people who want to do hard things and get injured quite a bit. And a lot of that comes from a couple places. It is not, it's certainly not that I'm a good runner, right? Like, yes, I'm a lifelong athlete. I like to do hard stuff, but ultras and ultras are certainly hard stuff, but it is the injuries. And ultra runners, if we're being honest, get injured way too much to the point that it's almost glorified sometimes. I mean, if we look at David Goggins as an example, he wrote this book. He's a savage. To be clear, like, I don't want to take anything away from this man, but in his book, Can't Hurt Me, it spoke to a lot of people. And while I think a lot of people need to work harder and get out of their comfort zone, People currently running ultramarathons are probably not that demographic. If you already run a ton of hours per week and try to run over a marathon through mountainous terrain, you might not need to push yourself that much harder. I think we overlook sections of that book where Goggins broke both of his feet, put them back together with duct tape, got rhabdo and pissed blood in a shower, right? And then he didn't go to the hospital about it. Like, Savage also messed up. I've done the destructive stuff where I pushed through a workout and had to take a month off because I made a single bad decision. And I'm not interested in it anymore. I have different priorities now. If you have an A race or a big event, sure. Like that's your thing for the year. It's what you've been working for for 12 months. Then maybe you push through it and get injured. For most people, for most things though, C race, training, like, don't get injured. It's not, it's not fun. It's not worth it. You have to take some time off. And then what if running is your, like, therapy? What if running is your mental clarity? What if that is your time to your day? What happens when you lose that, right? Like, we need to not do this. So I wanted to talk about a few reasons why injuries happen and how we can potentially avoid them. First, and this is the one you're not going to do a lot about. There's an acute cause for injury. Acute. It happens without really any planning or prediction. Sometimes their points two and three could play a role. But these are the ones where you like trip in a hole and mess up your ankle. This is where something comes out and like a deer comes and hits you, right? Like these are things you cannot predict for. I realize that last one's absurd, but you're not going to change a lot of things that happen about an acute injury. Yes, we can get more stable. Yes, we can get better at trail sighting. Yes, we can get better a little stronger. But a lot of the times, your acute injuries are not going to change in the moment. They just are. And it's not a thing we're going to do. So acute injuries suck. They really do. The best thing we can do is to figure out how to handle them once we have them. So I destroyed my left ankle in college. 
like just obliterated a lot of it. Um, tendons really weren't, weren't working right. I couldn't walk. Um, and it took me a long time to recover. And the injury itself was dumb, um, but it wasn't something I really could have planned for. I went up for a Frisbee in the middle of practice. I came down, my knee locked by accident, and I came down straight-legged. And as a result, everything compressed and the like, tendons and ligaments in my ankle no longer worked correctly. So I could have done a few things to prevent that, but not a lot. It was, it was a weird situation. What I could have done is recovered better. I could have had better food. I could have had a little more protein. I could have probably targeted collagen. I could have done any of the like, multiple therapy things I knew would have been helpful. And I could not have tried to come back too soon. So it was probably a three or four month injury. That's how much it warranted. It ended up being about a year because every time it started to feel better, I would push at the track and try to run really fast and destroy my ankle again. And this is what happens to a lot of people. We start to feel better and we assume we're all better. We need to ease back into it. So if you get injured, even if it's an acute injury, don't come back too fast. That's one of the big ones. Another thing that is cause for injury, number two, lack of preparation. So this is why I have every athlete I work with do a movement assessment. So we, we do a squat test, a single leg squat test, an ankle flexion test, and just for general health purposes, a wall test to see like upper body mechanics as well. And we learn a lot of stuff here. If you do a squat and if we can't get to parallel femurs on a squat without our knees caving in, then something's wrong. You probably have a weak glute medius. We might have something else going on. There might be some imbalance in your quads and your hamstrings, but something is up. And that will give us the inclination to dive a little further. And this is where preparation comes in. And we can do preparation in a few ways. Don't try to run 100 miles if you've done nothing but sit on the couch for the past six months, right? Like that's another version of preparation. We can prepare. We can make these assessments. We can spend a little time on identification. And if we do that properly, we have a much lower risk of getting injured. Not saying it won't happen, but we can minimize the risk with a little bit of work at the front end. And then that kind of brings me to under recovery. So most injuries come from doing too much work without recovering enough. And you'll often hear people say things like all injuries are a result of like too much, too fast. Fair. Um, it's definitely a component of a large section of injuries. But what we don't look at is, yes, it's too much, too fast, but in relation to what? It is too much, too fast in relation to how much we're recovering. In theory, you probably could have done that amount of work if you didn't have a bunch of other stuff in your life, right? So high-level athletes, yes, they're genetically gifted. They have all the time and like, this is what they do. They've been training for decades, but this is what they do. Like that is the part that people overlook. So they don't train for 10 to 15 hours a week and have a job that keeps them occupied for 40 to 45 hours a week and have to cook all of the dinner for them and their family. And you get what I mean, right? Like we don't have to do all these things. They will often have to train. Somebody else will often handle their food. Sometimes not, but typically at least partially. This is their job, so they get to focus on it. So when we hear about Olympic athletes training for six, seven, eight hours a day, it's because it's their job. That's what you do as well. Like you work six, seven, eight hours a day to make your rent. And that's what they're doing as well. And when you can dedicate the entire rest of your existence to recovery, or at least a large portion of it, right? Like I don't want to overlook kids, but still, if we can dedicate a large portion of the rest of our existence to recovery, you can train harder. For most of us who have jobs and have to take care of families and do all these things, you don't get to train as much because you don't have as much time for recovery. All stress will play in here. So we need to figure out the amount of work we can actually recover from. So these are our big three things that lead to injury. Acute factors, right? Like you trip in a hole. 
There's not a lot to do there, but we can definitely expedite how fast we can come back from that injury. And some of that is nutrition, some of it's rehab. This is where PTs are way better than I'll ever be. And this is where we are at this point. If you have an acute injury that there's not a lot to, have, you couldn't have done a lot to prevent it, so be it. But we can at least make the recovery process faster. Two, lack of it preparation. Maybe you got that acute injury because you have a lack of muscle harmony. And as a result, your knee caved inward when you fell in that hole and you broke <laughs> your MCL, right? Like this is where we're trying to prepare. You need preparation. We need to like go through an identification process, find your deficiencies and build them up. And then three, under recovery. All progress is made because we stress the body to a point that it hasn't been stressed before, and then we recover from that stress. And then we re repeat that process, and that's how we get better. And if we're not recovering, we're not actually making progress. So we need to have a proportional amount of recovery to whatever stress we put on the body. And all stress is stress. So if you have a bunch of life, family, and work stress, then our training stress needs to be less. The exact proportions are gonna be different for different people, but there is a proportion there. Every human has a point where they will overtrain themselves. Most people can train a lot more, if they can dedicate more to recovery. Eventually, you physically can't recover. Um, I saw, his actual name is escaping me, but the Iron Cowboy speak a few months ago, and he ran, did 101 Ironmans in 101 days. He worked himself so hard that he ended up in cortisol dysfunction. It took like six months to come back out of it, right? Like this is, this is an insane thing to do where you are not going to be able to physically recover. He ate 10,000 calories a day. He got all the massage. He got sleep and he just can't, you can't recover from that amount of volume. Most of us are not trying to do that. We're trying to recover from like one to two hours a day and we just don't eat enough food. Like we need to eat enough, get some sleep, maybe get a massage occasionally and like do some mobility work. If your recovery is in proportion to the effort you're doing, you're gonna have a much better chance of not getting injured. So those are our big three things. Acute injuries, lack of preparation under recovery. For acute injuries, try and expedite our recovery process. Um, for preparation, we need to go through some identification or assessment process or else we won't even need to know how to prepare. And then under recovery, let's make sure everything's in balance. So that's what I have for you today. Sorry it's a little scattered. It's been a weird week. I will uh, be back next week. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments in the next like few seconds. If not, I'll be back next week. It was good being here. Um, thanks, for, thanks for sticking around, those of you who did, and there will be a replay up tomorrow. Thanks so much, and I'll chat with you next week. Thank you for listening to the show. To be clear, I'm not a doctor nor a registered dietitian, and nothing you heard was medical advice. You should always speak with a qualified medical professional before making any changes to your training regimen. If you enjoy the podcast or found it useful, please take a couple seconds to give it a rating or share it with a friend. Every little bit helps. And if you want more of this information, please head to the Trail and Ultra Running Nutrition Group on Facebook. You'll be in good company with other like-minded people who like to do hard stuff outside.